this is Cecilia with Kentucky Rose Devotionals, where we're finding the roses in the Word of God. Happy to be back with you today on Tuesday, October the 15th. Um, we're going to talk about spiritual war today. So if you feel like you're in war, with if you're not at war, then you're not on God's side. <laughs> because if you're serving the Lord, you, you've got a war on your hands. Because as you serve God, as you live for Him, the... The arrows are going to fly from left and right. So if everything's going great in your life, you might want to question uh, for a moment where what side you're on. But 2 Corinthians 10 tells us about spiritual war and, and how to fight. And so I, I, we're just going to get right into it today. Verse 1, it says, Now I, Paul, myself, am pleading with you by meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence I am lowly among you, but being absent and bold towards you. So um, he's telling them, although I may be away from you right now, I am in boldness in prayer for you. He says, I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as we walked according to the flesh. He doesn't want us to walk according to the flesh. We, we never should want to do what our flesh wants to do because our flesh will lead us wrong. But he says, for we walk in the flesh. If we do, we do not war according to the flesh. For our weapons, we can't fight in this physical body. If we could... I'd pull out a machine gun and take it to the devil. But I can't, I could, that's not how, how it works. Um, we, we take it to him by our spiritual warfare, our spiritual armor, our shield of faith, our sword of the spirit, our helmet of salvation, our breastplate of righteousness, our belt of truth, our shoes of peace. We're to take all these things to the enemy. And that's the only way we can win against him. Our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty in God. You want to fight a battle and win? You fight through the Lord. You let him do the fighting for you. The pulling down of strongholds. Well, how do we do it? The casting down of arguments. Every high thing that exalts its name against the knowledge of God. We bring it, every single thought, he says, into captivity. We bind it. We capture it. By what? Obedience. Obedience to Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. We don't allow our body to be disobedient, but we stay in the spirit, fighting in the spirit, warring in the spirit, and align our flesh with our spirit so that we are obedient and we fulfill the call of God. We are never going to fulfill the call of God if we are in disobedience to the Lord. If we're going against any part of his word, any part of it, then we're in disobedience to him. So we've got to align ourselves, bringing every thought that we have in our mind into what Christ would have us think. How do we know what Christ thinks? We, we read his word. His word is his, his, his mind. If you want to know the mind of Christ, you've got to read the word of God. And if you're aligning your life with the word of God, then you don't have to worry. When you're against the word of God, when you're going against the will of God, you're going to have trouble. And he says we're going to have to punish that disobedience in you. We don't want to be punished. We don't want to be punished by God. So we want to be obedient to the Lord. God, The Lord wants you to walk with him. He doesn't want to have to, to bring you back into alignment when you've run away. He wants you to stay in alignment by the Spirit. So he says, do you look at things according to the outward appearance? If anyone is convinced in himself that he is Christ, if you think you belong to God, he says, then let him consider this in himself. Then just as he is Christ, even so we are Christ. For even if I should boast somewhat more about our authority, which the Lord gave us for edification and not for your destruction, I shall not be ashamed lest I seem to terrify you by these letters. He's saying, I don't want to have to shame you. I want you to know for yourself that you're aligning yourself with the Spirit. And as you align with the Spirit, then the Word will not be offensive to you. When the Word of God is offensive to you, then you're not in alignment with Him. He says, for his letters, they say, are weighty and powerful. God's words are weighty and powerful. But his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. He's saying, you know, if you feel weak in your, in, your, in your spirit or weak in your body and your speech isn't right, it's not going to be aligned with the letters and the words of God. Let us such consider a person this, that what, what we are in words by letters, when we are absent, such we will be indeed when we are present. Where if I'm with the Christians... I speak as a Christian. When I'm not with Christians, I still speak as a Christian, Paul says we should be. But the sad thing is, is that most people talk like a Christian when they're with Christians, and they don't talk like a Christian when they're with not people that are not Christians. So indeed, he says, we, we've got to be consistent, present with Christ 
at all times following him, being obedient to him. He says, For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves. We don't we don't puff ourselves up, he says, by measuring themselves by themselves or comparing themselves among themselves that are, are not wise. However, he says, we will boast beyond measure, but within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us, a sphere which especially includes you. God's appointed you to do great things for him. He says, but we are not overextending ourselves as though our authority did not extend to you, for it was to you that we came with the gospel of Christ. That's the reason why any of us should come to talk to anyone is, is to have that gospel in us ready in season and out of season. He says, not boasting of things beyond measure, that is in other men's labors, but we have hope. We don't look at what other men and women are doing, but we do what we do for God, that we, our faith is increased. He says, we shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere. What we do do for God will will grow other people. If we're doing the right things, we're going to see growth in all those around us. If people are doing the wrong things, you're going to see immaturity. And the people that you're with that are immature are going to drag you into immaturity and make you talk the way they talk. So we need to be talking Jesus. We need to be talking about our Jesus. Praise the Lord. That's the best talk to talk. Uh, and so that we're growing people around us, not making them immature, but growing them in the Lord. Um, so important. So, so important that we read the word and grow in it. Um, not to boast, he says, in another man's sphere of accomplishment. What other men do is what other men do. We do what we do for the Lord. And and we, we do it to glorify him. We don't do it for any other reason. He says, but he who glorifies, let him glorify to the Lord. Don't glorify yourself. Glorify God. For not he who commends himself is approved, but whom the Lord commends is approved. So if God has approved you, what man can disapprove you? But if God's condemned you, what man can approve you? God is, is in complete control of what we do. And he wants to be glorified. He wants to be number one. He doesn't want to be your number two. He wants to be your number one today. He wants to be glorified in you so that he can commend you to do great and mighty works for him. To recommend you to do wonderful things for him. This isn't a, a short today, but it's powerful to remind ourselves to glory in nothing but God. He gets the glory. And as we go through spiritual warfare, we got to remember to take every thought that is not like Christ, capture it, and put it underneath the blood of Jesus today. So whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, if there's something that you're facing, it's a crisis, bring it to Jesus and put it under the blood. Put, put the word of God over your situation. Speak it over your situation. I was telling you yesterday, put in names of family members. Put them in the promises of God and read that to God and claim it for them. You know, if you've got a loved one that's sick, put their name in. By your stripes, she is healed, whatever her name is. Put the word, put his name in there. Put, put God's name on it. Put his name on your situation and things will begin to turn. Things will begin to change and they will move in your favor if you are favored by God. But if you are doing things outside the will of God, you will never have the favor of the Lord. So this is so important that we claim the word, that we walk not in the flesh, but we walk with the Spirit. We walk with the Spirit by reading the Word, by praying, by seeking the face of God over everything that we do, no matter how big or small or how little it may be. We, we take it all before God today. God bless you. I will see you soon. So keep praying, keep reading, keep trusting, keep believing for your miracles today. If this has helped you, please like, share, and subscribe. We'd love to have you join us on this journey. God bless you, and we'll see you again tomorrow.